All right, Algebra 2, we're going to get to some big boy and big girl stuff here. Uh, we're going to add and subtract, which seems a little bit backwards. You're like, but we already multiplied and divided. But as we deal with fractions, remember, multiplying and dividing is a lot easier because when we get to when we get to adding and subtracting, we have to have a common denominator. Okay, so the hardest part here is trying to decide what it is. So what we'll do is we're going to factor out all the denominators. Notice the left-hand side's already factored. It's no big deal. So right-hand side, let's see here. Uh, we want x minus 2 and x minus 1. So what I'd like to do is identify anything that's already in common. So I already have an x minus 1 in both of them. So that means the left-hand side just needs an x minus 2. And that means they need an x minus 2 on top as well. So now I have a common denominator. I should be able to write x times x minus 2. We can go ahead and distribute that plus 2x minus 1. And then eventually it's going to be, I'm going to put all that stuff together, and it's over x minus 2 times x minus 1. So we have a lot more work to do in the numerator. I'm going to end up with x squared minus 2x plus 2x minus 1, and it's over top of x minus 2, x minus 1. And so what it is, I factored what I had. I want to find out if anything's already in common. If I don't have it in common, I need to give that to the other one. Okay, so this is all about giving as we work through these. Now, negative 2x and positive 2x, they're going to cancel each other out. So the numerator becomes x squared minus 1 over top of x minus 2, x minus 1. Now, since this one is easily factorable, I'll probably go ahead and do one more step and say that's x plus 1 and x minus 1 over top of x minus 2 and x minus 1. And look, even though we're adding and subtracting, I can still get rid of some stuff. So my final simplified version, and trust me, I tried to give you one of the worst ones to get started with because in the end, we could factor. Most often, this is where our answer is going to fall, right? Then it's kind of like that's all we can do. But this one, it was factorable. One more step. So if that's the worst it gets. This can't be too bad, right? Now, we also want to state any restrictions on the variable. So once we had a common denominator, so I'm going to go way back to here. That means x is not allowed to be 2 and positive 1. So 1 and 2, so domain x cannot be 2 and 1. Okay, even though it factors out later, we know that's going to be a difference between a whole and a vertical asymptote. No big deal. All right, let's take a look at another one. Like I said, that one was kind of sort of one of the worst ones. All right, x minus 1, that's all we can do. x and x minus 1. All right, so what's in common? I already have x minus 1 in both of them. So what do I need? I need another x on the left. And if I put it on the bottom, I have to put it on the top. So now we're going to distribute. So I got x squared minus x plus negative 2. So I'm just going to write minus 2. And it's over top of x and x minus 1. All right, is this numerator factorable? Well, I'm pretty sure that it's going to be. So x1, x, and 2. Those are my factors of 2. So I need negative 2 and plus 1. All right. So this time I couldn't, I just couldn't get rid of anything else. Okay, so I may see my answer as either one of these. But until I factored it here, I really didn't know if this was plus or minus for the 1. Restrictions. X is not allowed to be. Remember, this one's going to give me 0 and 1. So domain x is not allowed to be 0 and 1. So again, we're just going to factor like crazy. x plus 2, x minus 2, and that's okay because we're good at it. x plus 2 is already in common. So what do I need? What do I need? What we need is I need another x minus 2 over here, top and bottom. So we're going to distribute the 1, so that's no big deal. So up top we got x plus x minus 2. And I might just finish that and say it's 2x minus 2, and it's over top of x plus 2 and x minus 2. Now the top does have a GCF, so I might see it like this, over x plus 2 and x minus 2. Now if I was really thinking ahead, instead of writing x plus 2, x minus 2, I might go back to this x squared minus 4. But again, I wanted to check to see if I could reduce that out but it doesn't reduce. So this becomes our simplified form with our addition. And we're just going to go back and say, you know what? Uh, domain restrictions, x is not allowed to be. I had plus 2 and minus 2, so plus or minus 2. So we need these two parts to get our final answer. That was letter B. Is there a C? 
No, no, no. All right, just more of it. All right, so when I subtract, almost the same thing happens. What I have to be careful of is distributing this negative to whatever is going on up here. So I'm going to point that out first. So let's first get all this factored so we know who's going to get what else. And the other thing I'm going to do is give myself a little more space here. So while I factor it, I get x, x minus 2, minus 2, and an x minus 2. And I have x plus 2 up top here. All right, so what's in common already? In common, I have x minus 2. So what I see on the left is an extra 2. So I'm going to put that over here. Right, it was on the right, so I'm going to add it to the left. And then I'm going to go over here and say, well, this one has an x and this one doesn't. So I'm going to squeeze that in here. So it looks hunky-dory. And one more thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to kind of circle this negative with the x. So when I go to distribute it, I know it goes in there. Okay, so my common denominator, you can see it on both sides now, is 2x and x minus 2. 2x and x minus 2. In the numerator, what's going to happen is I have 2x plus 4 minus x squared minus 2x. Now notice I left the big space in there because I think I could just rearrange this, right? You know, I'm, I'm not a big fan of rewriting things over and over and over again. So if I can just use my space effectively, I'm going to rearrange this and put it in here. So negative x squared, 2x and 2x, those are gone. And plus 4. Oh, goodness gracious. I got to write it again, right? Now let me rearrange the top for you. So 4 minus x squared over top of 2x and x minus 2. Because 4 minus x squared is going to factor into what? All right, now don't let it fool you. 4 goes first, so it's 2 and 2, x and x plus and minus, and it's over top of 2x and x minus 2. Well, we learned in a couple lessons ago that these can cancel out as long as it divides out, as long as it turns into a negative 1. So I'm going to make it negative... 2 plus x over top of 2x. All right, so our common denominator was 2x and x minus 2, so that means we can get to our domain restrictions. Domain x, you are not allowed to be. 2x gives me 0, and x minus 2 will give me positive 2. So those are the two parts we're looking for. All right, I'll be honest, like the problems that uh, we're working on here, they're pretty tricky for this being brand newish. Okay, so uh, the idea is when you come to class, you can factor and you know what to add on, right? As long as we can get to this point, like once we see some of those other uh, uh, little uh, nuances, then you're gonna get a little bit better at that. Okay, first one, nothing going on. So I'm gonna factor this one. I got uh, x, uh, both negative, minus two, x minus one. So I already have an x minus two in common. That means the left-hand side, it needs an x minus 1, and we need an x minus 1 on the bottom as well. So common denominator, x minus 2, x minus 1. So I'm going to leave that be for a little while, and I do have to do this, right? I want to make sure I distribute this negative. That's probably the biggest problem that we have. Um, that's a carryover from Algebra 1. Now, the first two terms here, uh, factors, we got to put this together because I want to be able to combine like terms, but I don't, I can't do that yet, right? Because I have to multiply before I can subtract. So we're going to FOIL this out, right? So let me highlight. This is what I'm going to FOIL so we can start to get an answer. So I got x squared, and I got, uh, what, 3x and minus 1x. So we got plus 2x and then minus 3, minus 6x plus 7, right? Because I'm going to distribute that negative. So let's put all this together. x squared minus 4x and plus 4. Goodness gracious, what do we got here? X minus one and an X minus two, right? So this is ideally where we're gonna get to today. Just keep in mind, if you can factor that numerator, then we wanna do that one more time. We do have factors of four that add up to four, and that's two and two, X minus two and X minus two. Oh boy, X minus one and X minus two. Right? Those cancel out by division. So here we are, X minus two over X minus one. And that's what we're trying to get to. All right, domain restrictions. X, you are not allowed to be. I got one and two, one and two. Okay, so once I identify that common denominator, we can go with domain restrictions. I just leave it to the end because we kind of get on a roll of a couple things we're doing. Okay, big key here was distribute that negative sign. 
All right, let's take a look at number B. Number B, doo, doo, doo. five can only be five and one. The signs are definitely the same, both positive. So no big deal there. We already have X plus five in both. So I need an X plus one on the left-hand side. So up top, that's going to give me, right, I see x plus 1, x minus 1. So I know that's going to be x squared minus 1, right, because I'm going to get positive 1 and negative 1 for the x's. Distribute the negative, so minus x minus 3. So x squared minus x minus 4. Finally, one that doesn't factor here today, it's over top of x plus 5 and x plus 1. This one we cannot factor, so we're done with it. The domain restrictions, however, x is not allowed to be negative one or negative five based on that denominator. So we're always gonna keep that denominator factored out. Uh, if you're taking something multiple choice standardized and they want you to put it together, then go ahead and do it. Make sure you pick the right one. But uh, what we're doing right now in algebra two, if we can get here, we're in a good place. We're in a good place. All right because then there's like this monster here, okay? So remember that division bar is just like parentheses. So when I give you this problem, I'm really asking you to go ahead and put all of the top together, all right? So we're gonna do all of this, then you're gonna do all of this, and then you're gonna divide those two. Okay, so let's, uh, let's just work through the numerator first and see what happens. So I get x plus three and might as well factor this one while we're at it, right? Uh, x minus one and x minus one. It's plus x over, this is gonna be x minus two and x minus one. So luckily I have at least something in common here, x minus one and x minus one. So who needs what? This one over here needs an x minus one because they have two of them over there. And this one over here needs an x minus two. And I should be listing these on the bottom as well. Right, so we can start to put those together. So let's get that done with, uh, I have to FOIL on the left-hand side here. So x squared minus two plus three. So it's plus one x and minus six. I have a plus sign, so this one's not as stressful. So plus x squared minus an x. So x squared plus x squared, that's two x squared, x minus x, so they're gone, minus six. And it's over top of x minus one, x minus one and x minus two. All right, this is the numerator. Okay, so I'm gonna put that in a safe location. I'm gonna highlight that and say, you know what? This should be over top of the thing we get next. Okay, so now we're gonna take this guy and work this out. X, we've got uh, x minus two and x minus two, right? Because those are the factors of four that add up to four. It's minus, so we're gonna be careful with that. Uh, x plus two and x minus two. So I already have x minus two in common. I need another x minus two over here. And I need an x plus two on the left. So now my denominator say exactly the same thing. So let's work through the numerator. x squared plus two x minus two x plus four. Four, so the middle is going to cancel x squared plus four over top of x plus two, x minus two, and x minus two. But wait a minute, x squared plus four, this one's going to get a little bit easier because remember, these were the two parts I need to make into a big fraction. So let's reduce this one one more time. x plus two and x minus two over x plus two, x minus two, and x minus two. So let's get rid of each of those. So on the denominator, I am left with one over x minus two. So let's put this down here. So this is divided by one over x minus two. That means it has to be multiplied by x minus two over top of one. So now I have an x minus two that can be canceled out. And what we have so far is two x squared minus six, and I'm gonna multiply straight across x minus one and x minus one. Now there's a GCF in here, but it's gonna get me to two and x minus three, and it's squared. So it's not gonna simplify. Uh, so I'll take either one of these the way we have it. Um, 
that's all we're really going to deal with. Okay, so that's, uh, that's our complex fraction. We have fractions within the fraction, and we just want to try and clear those out and deal with it that way. All right, so we got one more here if you want to give it a try. Uh, otherwise, I try and keep this video a little bit shorter. Uh, we have some lesson check here and then some homework. So some of you guys like to just jot it on paper. Otherwise, I put all these problems down here with a ton of space. Okay, so we're going to add and subtract, and then we can combine that with division by dealing with these complex fractions. 